best job we can, and hopefully God will carry us the rest of the way. I want to illustrate something, and then we're going to open the phones up specifically on this question. What do you believe we should do to break the silence, to break the conditioning, and to rally free humanity against the forced drugging and poisoning of the entire food and water supply, as well as vaccines being rolled out in mass that literally send in live viruses to eat the neuron receptor sites for anger and resistance and strength. They admit they want lithium in the water. They're already putting it in, but they're now pushing it publicly to make you servile. Sodium fluoride. We had a top brain surgeon on yesterday who read from top EPA and FDA scientists, thousands of which have signed public letters in the last decade begging the government to take sodium fluoride out and citing hundreds of studies admitting it at least doubles cancer in the bones, in the liver. They come out and they admit they're going to approve Gardasil three years ago. They admit it kills people in the trials. And then they tell these dumbed down fluoride head housewives who are so trusting and these soccer moms and these soccer dads, take your daughters in, give them the shots. And then I literally saw scores, scores of local newscast where they'd show the girl on a ventilator, the cheerleader, over and over again. And then they'd show newscast of them deader than a hammer. And we just calmly sit here and we take it. They knew 60 years ago when they approved corn syrup that when they gave it to rats, they more than quadrupled their chances of cancer. Here it is, raw story today, citing mainstream reports. Corn byproduct, fructose, literally fuels cancer cell growth, study finds. They knew when they approved more than five decades ago bisphenol A that in every study of monkeys and rats and guinea pigs, I'm getting chills right now, I actually got chill bumps, because as a normal human, I understand this violent assault. I know I'm being attacked. Just like if somebody breaks in my house at night, I'm going to get out of bed and just, you know, defense mode. And anybody who's red-blooded would. But more and more, they're reporting people lay down and let themselves be attacked. Six kids slipped in one after the other like lemmings into a river, not knowing what to do, not knowing how to swim. People just walk out in front of cars now. They just pull out in front of cars. And the studies show they're on serotonin reuptake inhibitors. They've been turned into zombies. You wonder why the public can't resist. You wonder why the public can't get angry. Have you noticed the illegal aliens can protest by the tens of millions nationwide multiple times a year? Because they're coming from Mexico. They're still red-blooded. Their water's not fluoridated. I'll tell you this. I look at the illegal aliens. They're a lot more alive than the average Hispanic, black, white, or Asian that's been living in this country eating the poisons. You go down to Mexico, they don't have all these additives in the food, though that's starting to change. You look at old black and white photos of your grandparents, your great-grandparents, their eyes are electric, they look awake, they look alive. You look at people now, they look like, like zombies. I look at these illegal aliens, I watch them out my window while they're building a house across the street. Those people, their eyes are on fire! You can see it. It makes me rethink everything. It, it starts making me think about geopolitical movements. Perhaps all we've got is the third world left. It looks like the West has already been ruined. Perhaps I should just join with those people and actually go and try to wake them up to what's happening and say, fine, I'll be for your Le La Reconquista. Don't abort your kids. Don't take the shots. Maybe they'll listen, because I've been studying in Africa and Asia and, the, and in the Middle East when the U.N. pulls up with armored vehicles and they've made local payoffs to police to forcibly inject everybody. The people run to the hills. They fight to the death because they know that when their women are injected, they always come for the pregnant women. That's in the programs. And they have miscarriages and then become sterile. They run. They fight fight. They fight in Peru. And then it came out they were being sterilized down there. 
But Americans may be too far gone on average, already chemically lobotomized, already can't even get angry, already can't even wake up. I don't even know what to say anymore. We are always watching it for you. It's like we're living in a cage with invisible walls The wicked sight, guys of life, making grown men crawl On their knees, begging please, save us from the boogeymen Funded by the CIA, funneled through Arabian banks Like a shank to the neck, they hit you from the back No sweat, ho check and watch us shake And take away your freedom, you really don't need them When you're tucked away safe and protected by FEMA Then you must be a dreamer, like the great pretender Ask the second amendment, why I'll never surrender But I'll never plead a fifth when it comes to September I'ma yell it from the roof and expose the agenda yeah. Time to wake up and open your eyes to the matrix This is going out to the truth as a patriot mm. There's mm. so many different sources out mm. there People don't know which ones to trust and which ones not to trust So I interviewed an expert in water treatment to set the record straight Okay, my name is uh, Joshua Foster uh, I spent 12 years um, at various levels of the water treatment industry uh, in Sacramento. Uh, I carry a grade two California State water treatment certificate. Um, pretty much uh, the lay of the land, man, anything that has to do with uh, water or um, sewer in the city of Sacramento, I, I participated in it. You know, if you could say anything to uh, your city council representative, what would you say? It's your, it's your job to remain educated on issues that concern the people that you represent, whether that's fluoride, whether that's organophosphate. It doesn't take much time. You don't need to go read a, a, a book from Harvard Law. It takes probably five minutes to look into fluoride how it works, how it's toxic. Everybody in water treatment, everybody in, in fire, and everybody that's driving the trucks that bring it in from wherever we're buying it from, everybody at every level knows that it's, it's toxic, it's poison. But everybody gets paid from it, so everybody continues to do it. I, I can't make it any any simpler than that. Like, well, you were actually working for the city. Like, you knew that fluoride had nothing to do with water treatment. It was just, it's, it's toxic, it's corrosive. But, I mean, you know, you're just basically doing your job adding it to the water. Yeah, I can tell you um, anybody that has any kind of certification or anybody that's applied fluoride or understands water treatment uh, un understands that it has nothing to do with water quality. Um, it has nothing to do with uh, eliminating any toxins or bacteria. It has anything. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's actually applying a toxin to the water. And anybody at any uh, respectable level of water treatment will agree with that. And so all the other operators, there are, there, you know, they know that it's it's BS basically. Oh yeah, it, absolutely. They they all um, anybody that's that's taken the fluoride out and and added the sodium fluoride to the wells, um, or anybody that's at the water treatment plant with a, a high level certification knows that there's absolutely no reason to add it to the water. It's it's not doing anything for anybody, and they're they're very everybody at every level is very aware of it. Yeah, but they usually don't speak out because that's, I mean, that's how they make a living. Uh, it's, the, it's, it's their bread and butter, man. I, it's, it would be like uh, a NASCAR guy coming out and saying, hey, we're really wasting gas here, you know. <laughs> um, so nobody's going to step out and say, hey, uh, this is really stupid that we're doing this. Like, when did you start publicly speaking out against uh, water fluoridation? Well, uh, I spoke out. The, the, the real concern with me 
actually had nothing to do with uh, the application of fluoride. It had to do with the cost of the application of fluoride. Good evening, Mr. Foster. In within the Department of Utilities or within plant services, what could be done there? Um, a couple of things that I saw and had question about, and I asked uh, Mr. Brin about before, and I would expect the response uh, from his office soon as well was. Um, removing the fluoride from there was the water. A point in time when I uh, was employed with the city, that uh, they started threatening layoffs with uh, some of the um, some of the people that worked for me. And you know, you, your initial reaction is, okay, well, where can we cut money uh, to ensure that these people keep their jobs? You know, without going to the citizens and asking for a rate increase. Granted, I know the department doesn't have the money, but really the public doesn't either. Um, and the first thing I promise you at any water treatment uh, facility, at any level in any city, the first thing that should be cut is the, the, the fluoride distribution. Um, it's an immediate savings, um, and, it's, and it's quite an expense. Good to see you again, Mr. Foster. Also, I, I brought up before, and I, I did get a reply um, about the fluoride being in the water. Um, that doesn't, that isn't something that's mandated. That doesn't uh, make our water quality any better, which is the job of, of utilities to provide a certain quality of water, which they do. I know it's rated very high, um, but the fluoride doesn't, it's, it's a, <laughs> It's a good cost and doesn't participate in, in um, increasing the quality of the water. And in terms of the fluoride question, uh, I'm not really, um, I, I, I don't know if any of us are expert in the application of fluoride, um, but I will say, uh, one, you know, it's, it's probably about a million, a million and a half a year. Is that what it is? Yes, it's about a million to a million and a half, and we are, Currently working to get about five hundred fifty thousand. Excuse me, five hundred fifty thousand one time that would be coming forward to council. The the uh, caveat with that five hundred fifty thousand would be we have to continue to fluoride for four years. So this is a policy the council back in about two thousand adopted was to fluor fluoridate our water. At that time we got cap we got money to install the equipment, but we've been operating it on ratepayers costs. Uh, you, you've seen the footage it's, uh, in the city it's about 1.5 million a year. Um, when they do the uh, when they do the employee layoffs they estimate uh, each employee at hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, that's not to say that they make a hundred thousand but that's to say that uh, their insurance and uh, social security and things like that they, they put a price on uh, each person as a hundred thousand so 1.5 million, you know, saves you 15 employees exactly. a, a year, and it and it's and it's an immediate gain. Um, so that was the first thing that woke me up. Um, uh, at the time, I had lived out of town. Um, when I moved back to the city of Sacramento, uh, it became very important to me uh, because of my son. Um, where I came from, it was, an, it was a newer facility. They had wells, uh, and they weren't adding fluoride yet. Uh, when I moved back to Sacramento, uh, it became a real big issue um, because my son, you know, obviously taking baths, and, and uh, you know, we, we built a garden in the backyard, and then we got to add fluoridated water to our garden, um, uh, washing your clothes, you know, cooking your food, everything, you know, making your coffee, whatever it is, anything that you do with water um, it has it has fluoride in it and that's that's not that's not by choice so I, I was hoping I could do something and most people don't drink their tap water in the first place most of um, I would say in excess of, of 60 percent of the water treated in Sacramento which is up over 100 million gallons a day um, goes to irrigation and things like that so at the most, I, I would say under 10% goes to people actually drinking the water. So the exposure lies in um, you water your garden with it, you take a bath with it, you make your coffee, uh, you, you cook your dinner in it, you soak your uh, chicken or whatever, you know, whatever the hell you make 
um, your ice cubes, your it, it, everything you're exposed to. Now, people also think that, oh, well, I drink bottled water. Uh, almost, I would say, well above 90% of bottled water is purchased from a municipality and, and re-bottled after maybe a small amount of filtration um, and still contains uh, probably somewhere around, you know, the, the same parts per million that you would be getting from the distribution system in the first place. So, and, and then you go to Starbucks and you get your coffee there. All of, all of that's fluoridated water. It's not, it's not filtered at a, at a high level. So you, if it's not just, oh, I don't drink tap water. It's, you are exposed to it on every level of every time you cross water. And you everybody can, uses water. All of us are using water. In, in every walk of life, you are exposed to fluoride. But it, it, it also benefits the operator to remove it as well because it's a hazardous material that they're no longer dealing with. Um, so their safety, you know, at that point comes into play. And, and, and again, I'll, I'll say there's, there's, no, there's no operator at any level that will say, oh, there's nothing wrong with fluoride. I like going out and adding it to the wells. Or I, I love unloading it off the trucks when it comes in these, in these bags with these skulls and crossbones on it and, and all these poison warnings. Yeah, that's, that's a great part of my job. You know? and you're not going to find anybody at any level in any city that says that. You can get a dentist to come out and say, oh, yeah, this is great for your teeth. Um, but there's no uh, educated doctor at any level that's going to say, that fluoride, when inhaled or digested um, or absorbed through your skin, is going to say that that's good for you. That you won't find you won't find one. It, it it's not here to help us. It's not it's not benefiting us. And, and we have to be able to we have to be willing to do whatever it takes to to get it out. Man, we can't we can't give up. But just know in your hearts when you go home today that you were part of approving this contract to bring this to our city, to our water supply, to the water that my children bathe in, to the water that your children bathe in. I, I, I find it very um, uneducated. I find it very uh, offensive that th there hasn't been enough of your guys' support in educating the community so that they can make a decision on whether or not we want this in our supply. How much success have you had trying to waken people up to the, the dangers of fluoride? Uh, the, well, actually, when you speak to a, a, a normal human being, man, you, got, you cross paths and, and you say, well, what do you know about fluoride? Oh, I know my dentist gives me a little bit of fluoride when I go there and there might be some in the water, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't take much to, to convince um, a, a decently educated human being that fluoride is toxic. Um, it's really a small conversation. When you want to convince a city council, or you want to convince um, somebody whose job may be at stake, I've had zero success. What do you think people need to do? It's, ed it's education. Um, the votes come in in support of fluoride because your dentist tells you it's okay. And your dentist has white teeth, so they must know that it's okay. Um, but if you could get out and educate just enough, it, you don't have to reach everybody. If you could get out and educate just enough people to get the votes... At least at our at least at our level, and at least here in Sacramento, um, we can win. Uh, we're going to have to, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna have to take our defeats, man. We've been getting we've been getting whooped for quite a few years, uh, but there's still a lot of concerned citizens. There's still a lot of good, hardworking people that are willing to sacrifice their time and their efforts uh, to continue the fight. Uh, but I would be willing to sit down with anybody at, at any level, council, the mayor, the city manager, um, the division manager of utilities, uh, the director of utilities, 
uh, anybody at any level, the, the, the highest uh, person, in uh, the dentist in Sacramento, whoever it is, anybody at any level to debate the, the, the merits of fluoride and no, I mean, nobody will do it, but I would be willing to sit down with anybody in, in any public forum. Is there potentially a situation where you could have a fluoride level in the water that's higher than uh, what they claim to be? Yes, the, the potential is always there. It's not monitored 24-7. They, they go out three times a week and, and they check these levels and they make the adjustments. So the potential is that uh, based on demand and flows uh, that that could go up in that tank or it could go up in the system and you wouldn't recognize the higher level until the operator went back out there the following time which may be two days later which may be uh, with a holiday or a weekend maybe three days later. Does How much does it fluctuate from place to place? I mean, is it, it's not just a, a constant uh, level throughout the whole city like they kind of portray it as. No, uh, they they can get close, man. I will I will give them a small amount of credit. They they can get close. Uh, what they do is they test the raw water. Your raw water may change and fluctuate while you're gone, but you set it based on a certain parts per million. Uh, maybe the raw water goes down and the fluoride level goes down, or your raw water was 0.1 but goes up to 0.3 and you, you have your uh, settings based on a different um, reading. You might be the first person uh, on that tap when the raw water goes up and the, they're still dosing at a higher level based on a lower level of raw water um, fluoride. You might be the first person on that system that gets it at uh, uh, 1.5 parts per million um, before the adjustment is made, but the, the real problem is not the adjustment or, or the universal level is that it's, there's no universal monitoring. The, the kids that live at the first tap uh, may have issues where they can't uh, process the, the fluoride. You know, for once whatever. you get to understand where fluoride comes from, uh, not calcium fluoride, that's... That's the naturally occurring Naturally uh, occurring compounds. fluoride that it exists in very, very, very low doses in our water already. The the fluoride that we're using is is it's a it's a byproduct from the aluminum industry. It's also a byproduct of the fertilizer yeah, industry. Yeah, phosphate fertilizer. Our rural areas too wear the shroud of air pollution. One example is Central Florida, where fluorides given off in the processing of phosphates for fertilizer have damaged the citrus and cattle industries that form the mainstay of the local economy. Fluorides in the dust given off by phosphates also produce the disease fluorosis in the cattle. Bony growths develop along the skeleton, causing lameness and finally death. If, if these things are considered toxic poisons and you have to get rid of them in another way, uh, then these companies wouldn't be as prosperous. By recovering flu silicic acid from fertilizer manufacturing, water uh, and air pollution are minimized and water authorities have a low cost of fluoride. In other words, EPA's solution to pollution by this waste product is dilution, as long as it's not dumped into rivers and lakes, but rather directly into drinking water systems. Now they're selling the byproduct as well as, you know, the product that they intended um, so it, it definitely makes it more profitable and it allows them to um, throw some extra money at uh, the ADA. It allows them to throw extra money at um, these little crony uh, things that are formed like with the county, your first five or wherever you're at, whatever it's called. It's, it's a byproduct, okay? It's dumped directly into the trucks and shipped to municipalities. From that point, to the point where it gets put into the water, it's a toxic waste. Like the fire department, they're, I mean, they're really the first responders if there was some sort of hazardous waste spill. Your, your local fire department is, is trained in what they call hazmat or hazard, hazardous materials. When they respond to a situation and they don't know what it is, they have to read certain signs. There's placards, 
Uh, they may not be able to get close enough to read the placards. Uh, what the city of Sacramento now is requesting is a, a, a new rapid deployment kit. Uh, what this kit will allow them to do is remotely analyze what's been spilled um, so that they can figure out how to contain it um, in a responsible manner. The new rapid deployment kit detects hydrogen fluoride. If this is a kit utilized to limit their exposure to toxins and fluoride is not a toxin, why would it be on the list of things that this uh, deployment kit detects. This film itself is presented here only to show that mammalian cells in tissue cultures can be and are damaged by fluorides and some even killed when their contact with sodium fluoride is in the concentration of one part in 30 million. And we do have photographic records showing almost the same thing in one part in 60 million. You will know here where the uh, fluorine has just been introduced that there is a distinct stimulation of all the cells as they react to the poison. This we take to be a defense mechanism. Then uh, big things begin to slow up and reproduction is definitely inhibited. Not just the water treatment operators that are certified. All of your firefighters and I would venture to guess some of your police department and, and county sheriffs have, as well are familiar with the toxic levels of fluoride and, and the caution that you have to have to respond to these spills because it is incredibly toxic. Here we have another a demonstration of uh, the uh, destruction of cells by a perfusion of one part in 30 million. Note the swelling of the membranes around the cells. This makes it impossible for them to absorb foodstuff. Note they're shriveling up now. There are no cells dividing. Most of the cells are dead or dying. They say, well, we've diluted it to such a point that it's no longer toxic in your water. The Center for Disease Control has identified fluoride in the water as one of the top 10 most significant factors in the last two, 20 years to uh, help young people, particularly in disparate communities. Is whether it's vaccines or fluoride or spraying or some of these other things, public health isn't something that is always an easy goal to accomplish and you're trying to provide widespread benefit to um, a community and a population and uh, not everybody will understand that. Something that's toxic is is always toxic. Yeah. No, it just the, the change in the dose changes how what the effects will be. In summary, I wish to make it very clear again that this film which you have just seen is a graphic record of what we and Drs. Berry and Trillwood have seen in our cultures when they were perfused with dilute solutions of sodium fluoride. And if prolonged over months and years, as in this case where fluoridated water is being used, chronic disorders and upsets of function in one or more of the vital organs may ensue. But the constant drinking of fluoridated water may bring about a gradual accumulation of damage to and scarred tissue in the various organs, resulting in the production of many vague complaints in some or in nearly all parts of the body. Your body has certain filters yeah. to eliminate the fluoride, and if you don't have a filter on your house, you are the filter. Fluoride has nothing to do with water treatment. Um, it's, it's actually more of a nuisance, um, you know, because of its effects on pH and, and things like that. Fluoridation is one of the top ten public health achievements of the 20th century. That statement is cited nearly every day somewhere in the world. And those people that are citing it don't realize that the, the, the paper on which it's based is junk science. It was written by a, a, a dentist that had never written anything on fluoridation before and an economist. 
Those, are the those two people have persuaded the world that fluoridation is one of the top 10 public health achievements of the 20th century. What they should have told them, it's one of the greatest betrayals of the public's trust in the 20th century. This water comes in from the river, it's treated at a treatment plant. You take a drink or you take a shower, it goes down the drain, it goes to a wastewater facility. They eliminate waste and it goes right into the river. Fluoride is not one of those wastes um, that gets eliminated. And I've heard here recently that it, it's, it's somewhere, sometimes even the range of uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 parts per million on the raw side. But it, it, it also benefits the operator to remove it as well because it's a hazardous material that they're no longer dealing with. Um, so their safety you know, at that point comes into play. The, the sodium fluoride that they use, they take it out to the wells, they put it in a saturator, it goes into a small reservoir and then into the distribution system. If I took that same bag of sodium fluoride that they used and I dumped it in the river behind us, um, I would be arrested because I was dumping a industrial waste into our river which is protected from industrial waste. A bag of sodium fluoride in that river would be di diluted uh, rather quickly, um, but it's still a, a protected river for all the people that, that use it for drinking water. But if they dump it into the well and give it to you slowly, uh, well that's, that's okay. Every level of humanity that protects the environment would not allow me to put sodium fluoride in any of their waterways. If fluoride is on that list as a hazardous material, I don't know how much easier it becomes at that point to explain it. It's a hazardous material. It's an industrial waste byproduct.